Incoming ship. We're not expecting another supply shipment until sometime next week. Sir, transponder codes read as the Chimera. Oh, shit. Pilots to stations. Your orders are to push past the ISD and jump to hyperspace to safety. Launch fighters and begin to evacuate the base. Alert all commands. Deploy the fleet in defensive formation and launch fighters. We've got incoming signatures. Ties. Squadron, break and engage. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shaq here. I hope you guys enjoyed that, uh, well, that intro video that I put together. I was inspired by the modding community and a lot of these really cool builds that are out of the workshop right now. I'm gonna do a quick little run through of everything that we used and the mods that were used. So if you wanna use them for your own projects, if you wanna use them uh, for your own playthroughs or if you're playing survival, there's actually quite a really cool mods that I used in that intro. So we're gonna run through them really quickly. And behind me is a mod that we've actually talked about quite a bit. That's the X-Wing Armco X-Wing mod pack made by Spacebar. It's amazing and I love it. It's actually a mix of a couple of mods. So we got the Armco, um, the Armco pack. There's a lot of Armco mods, by the way. This is just the X-Wing pack. So it gives you X-Wing parts like the cockpit, the engines, the weapon systems, which uh, soon, uh, I'm told, are gonna have uh, regenerating ammunition. So they'll actually generate ammo as long as there's enough power on the ship itself. But that pack comes with a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we got the R2 on there in the back. We got hyperdrive for fighters on the back. And you can use these parts to make all kinds of cool stuff. Wanna make your own headhunter? Go for it. Uh, one of the mods that are on here that I've talked a lot about and I highly recommend it, I'll put a link in the description, is the um, the foldable landing gear. There aren't, I don't think there's any other folding landing gear on the workshop but these, and they work brilliantly. They still lock like normal landing gear, and you can fold them up into your ship. Uh, this, of course, isn't the best example because it doesn't actually fold up into it. Uh, they kind of stick out, but they're deployed right now. We'll take it for a flight later, and I'll, I'll fold them up. The next thing, the, sh the station. Now, I've used this station in a number of videos, but I haven't really talked about it. Now, it's been on my... Um, uh, my blueprints list for a while now. Let me open that up and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. It's the Imperial Base made by Black Armor. I'll put a link so if you wanna if you wanna get this blueprint. It is a completely vanilla build that we've used as a ground-based hangar for lots of stuff when we need just like a quick base and we don't have time to build one ourselves. So that's the base that I've used for you guys who've been asking about it. Zooming up here, talking about mods with a little functionality to them. So I've used a number of radar mods in the past. This one, though, is it's got some unique features, and I love the model for it. It sits here, and it spins. It's got two modes for scanning down. It basically will find blocks out there, uh, builds out there, and then give you the location for them. 
in passive mode or in active mode. It's in active mode right now because I cranked the range. Once you go past, I want to say it's 10,000 uh, 10, meters, you you end up going straight into, uh, into active mode. But we can bring that back down. So right now, uh, it's sitting there spinning away. I can actually force it to do a scan uh, as soon as I can actually push the button. There we go. Radar. Uh, we can do a scan. We can have it go straight, the information that we get from the scan, straight to a LCD, like the radar one that I've already set up. So we can do a scan here. It takes 60 seconds to do a full scan and lights up pink. It is now scanning the area around us for any kind of build. So any block set up, uh, and there are a number of them, like that shut down, power down TIE bomber. It will pick up power down vessels. It also, when it's scanning, is basically broadcasting its position. Meaning, if you want to do an active scan, say you want to use this for maybe your multiplayer, and you're doing maybe some kind of PvP, if you're doing an active scan to find out where other people are, you're giving away your position while you're doing it. So this thing takes 60 seconds to run through. It'll populate this LCD with a whole bunch of GPS coordinates. It also will uh, transmit those GPS coordinates to any cockpit. So if you're sitting in a cockpit, and the scan goes through, you will get a series of, I believe it's temp GPS coordinates. So in, in about 30 seconds or so, this will fill up with everything in the area that it's detecting. It won't tell me what it is, but it'll say there's some small blocks out there. There's a massive something out there, and it'll give us the positions for them. And of course, we can turn them on and go and locate them if we want to. So uh, we're still scanning. I think the scan is actually done. We should have GPS coordinates. Weirdly, we don't. Uh, it worked just a second ago. Let me jump up here. But we do have... Okay, oh, because I probably have it going straight to just the LCD. Maybe I have to be uh, in the grid that has the scanner. So maybe like a large grid with the with the seat. But there you go. We're picking up a bunch of tiny vessels, tiny vessels, and a massive unknown, which we're going to take a look at in a second. It's actually quite a bit up there, 17 kilometers above us right now. But there's all your GPS coordinates. So we can jump through here and take a look. Um, make sure if you're doing this, put it to text and images or nothing will actually pop up. It'd be neat if this could like open up a map or at least some kind of like range bands. So maybe like a series of circles that are range bands and then dots or its contacts and maybe just like a number or a letter next to each contact. I don't know how you could do that. I know there used to be a a, a, a mod that sort of had that functionality with the, uh, the the strategy controls. Not sure if that one still works anymore though. I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't. I really love this model. Anywho. Let's get to one of the more exciting mods that I'm really, really pumped to try to uh, show you guys. So, let me go ahead. Something that we were talking about before. So, one of the issues that we have with some of the modded cockpits that we've got, like the X-Wing, uh, is... Let me turn that down just a little bit. Uh, is targeting things. The problem with, with space engineers in general is that there's no targeting system. Right? You can't, like, lock on every other space in your play. You'll have some kind of, you know, hit T targets, cycle through targets, and... More often than not, they'll actually give you some kind of um, uh, fire indicator. Where to shoot when two targets are moving. Space Engineers doesn't have any of that. You get basically, if they've got a beacon, then you'll know where they are. Like that TIE fighter right there has an antenna on it, so we're picking it up. Uh, but, as I get within firing range, and I open up my S-foils, we now have a targeting indicator. Doesn't matter if they've got an antenna or a beacon, that red triangle will pop up. And we have a firing indicator, meaning... Uh, because I'm circling it, it's telling me, hey, lead your target just slightly to the left because of the way you're moving, and you're probably going to hit it. So if I line up the shot here, and I line up on that, I can actually manage to hit the tie. And there we go. We just hit it. We just damaged it. It looks like the cockpit. We saw a little bit of green smoke pop up. I love this because not only does this work great for just figuring out where you need to be aiming if you're using cannon weapons and not turreted weapons, but I am nailing it, but... With the custom cockpits, a lot of the times, you'll be flying and the target will go underneath you or go like well beyond your visual range because there's a part of the cockpit in the way, and yet we still have an indicator on where it is so we can make our, uh, our adjustments while we're dogfighting, which is pretty nice. Something that I was really missing. And then boom, explosion. That brings us up to the update for the Imperial mod. This is of course, there's not much of it left, but this TIE Fighter comes from uh, Krieg's Imperial mod which has a ton of empire-based technology that you can build stuff with. Now, notice this exploded, and both of the control, like the pillars that stick out the sides of it, right? 
those have exploded too. Well, this has been rebalanced. Now, there's an issue with the, the Armco TIE Fighters, and they were, they turned into eyeballs of death. Basically, just the eyeball could fly around with two cannons full control without the um, the solar panels on the sides, the wings of the TIE Fighter inside. They could still fly around and fight, meaning they were incredibly hard to hit and super tiny and super maneuverable and effective at killing everything. The eyeball of death. Well, those have been rebalanced now. The eyeball of death is no longer a thing. Uh, if you take out the wings, the wings have a habit of exploding with a bit of force and they will take out the pylons. That's what they're called, like little pylons on the sides. Those act as, I believe, power generation and gyro control. So when you knock one of those things out, well, the tie is gonna be in a really rough shape. You knock them both out, both wings out. It is dead in the water and floating off or whipping off into space, out of control. So no more, no more target of death. Go ahead and take it out. There does seem to be a little bit of a minimum range. If you get a little too close, you will lose your uh, your lock and your aim indicator. I don't know what the uh, what the range is there or how it changes with what fighters, but this should work, this targeting mod, should work with um, any forward firing cannon weapons, modded or not, because we're of course using modded weapons for this. Uh, you just put it in, make sure you get the, um, the text API mod in there as well. I'll put a link to that. So lastly, we're gonna take a look at the build that really inspired a lot of this. And that is Thrawn's flagship, the Chimera. Sauron built this, and it is gorgeous. Not only is it one of the better looking ISDs, it's a little on fire because I didn't turn off thruster uh, damage. Sadly, this is one of those builds where they were hiding thrusters. Uh, it is a vanilla build outside of just the Star Wars weapon pack, the old weapon pack. Um, still a cool pack, mind you. I have taken those weapons off and added in Krieg's Imperial uh, ISD cannons, which do work now. Those are pretty great. We're still working through the balance on those. So there's a little bit of damage to it, but look at this ship. And if I zoom out the bottom, you can see it's obviously Thrawn's ship. It has the paint job indicating that it's his. Now this does, uh, it is big enough to hold a number of fighters inside and it is big enough to hide, uh, to hold the Armco TIE fighters. If you want to drop in a couple of TIE interceptors in here, I did a little bit of modification, put a few of the decorations in there from the, uh, the Armco Imperial pack and the TIE launcher, which you guys see, saw in the, uh, the opener for this, they, these work as connectors, basically. These will refuel and recharge your TIE fighters, uh, and hold them in place while you jump through, uh, you make any, you know, uh, jumps, jumps with your jump drive. So, pretty neat. The ship though looks amazing. I saw this uh, on the on the workshop. I was like, yeah, no, this has got to be a thing. We're doing this. The cannon ranges on these, they at the moment I think they're a little bit too shy. They're like 1,300, which if you can see from the trailer, the opener for this episode, uh, that is really close for a ship that's supposed to be able to like orbital bombardment. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we need to expand these a bit. Maybe give them a little bit more explosive capability. Uh, but it's something that uh, Krieg is early, early days on the Empire pack, I think. Uh, but there you go, guys. Those are some of the mods that we use. Oh, and by the way, the background that you're seeing is the 4K stars only mod, which is something that I use basically every time I play Space Engineers. I don't use the default skybox because, I don't know, it's, it's super cloudy and gray. And it, doesn't, it doesn't look very good. It kind of throws the lighting off a bit. So I, uh, I definitely enjoy this. And this gives it more of a Star Wars-y feel to it. But let me know what you, what you guys use for skyboxes, because I've been looking for new ones to get a bit of a, bit of a mix in there. Uh, and I've only got a handful of them, and I don't think all of them work anymore. I thought like the Galante one I used to use doesn't really work anymore, but a bit it's a bit sad times. So Imperial Pack has had a lot of new additions to it. We're gonna do like a proper uh, spotlight on that. I should bring my gear up, bring my gear up and start heading back down. We'll do a proper spotlight on that at some point um, as uh, more stuff gets added, probably when some of the big stuff comes out. We'll do a, a full run through. Uh, of course, the uh, the Rebel Pack has also gotten a ton of work to it. It's got new turrets in it and all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, there was one other mod that I didn't mention that we got to talk about real quick because Spacebar made some really cool stuff. So in Space Engineers in general, uh, there there's a limited number of bridge control systems, right? Like decorating your bridge. And in the, the one that everybody uses, it doesn't have working LCDs. It's not a thing that was around when that mod was made. Well, guess what? Space Bar has come and built us some really cool stuff. So we have a collection uh, now that we get to use of different control panels. So if you're talking about like a pilot seat, which I think this is actually the pilot seat. Yeah, here we go. A pilot seat with working, you know, hor uh, 
uh, horizon indicators and speed and planetary gravity and all that, even the working clock. And of course you can customize these. They're just LCDs. You can change them any way you want to. Um, there's just a variety of them. So if you want to deck out your bridge with something a little bit new, there's the captain's chair, by the way. I love that he's got that. Wait, what is that? Salt a Coke. Oh boy. It's just full of salt. So much salt. And there you go. A little bit, little bit more decorative stuff for your ship that you don't have to pay for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all the links are in the description below. If you enjoyed the spotlight, let me know in the comments. I will see you all later in the week, probably with a Star Wars Forces of Corruption mod spotlight and beginning of a new playthrough. Very excited. All right, everybody. I will see you all in the next one.